What is going on, Savage here? I hope you're having a good day, and I hope that Warzone's treating you well and you're getting a lot of wins. I know for me, Seasons 5 has been a little rough, but hopefully you guys are slowly improving and getting better at the game. In this gameplay, we're gonna be breaking down a random trio's game, and throughout the entire match, we're gonna be spectating multiple teams. We're gonna be going over all the fights they get into, what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, what I recommend that they do, as well as the enemies that they kill. We're gonna try to go a little bit more in depth. That's why these videos are getting a little longer and longer, but hopefully you guys can actually take some lessons out of these videos and improve in Warzone. But before we get into it, subscribe to the channel, join the Wolfpack today. Also leave a like on the video. Let's get this video to 700 likes. And as always guys, if you are looking for teammates and other people to play with who actually use their thumbs or hands, please join our Discord community. The link to that will be in the description below. I'm trying to bring everybody together with our Discord community because I know how hard this game can be to play by yourself. If you don't have people to play with, it can be a little rough playing with randoms. But without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and dive into the video. All right, here we are spectating Just Blaze and he's throwing down his armor box. Eh, I'd go with it. He needs five plates. That's fine. Uh, normally, I'd probably try to hold on to it. Um, it's so early in the game. You can find money to buy it and rather hold on to that box for a fighting situation but that's just personal preference there really is a strategy behind that um 1500 for five plates is way cheaper than buying a, a plate box but again personal preference all right here we are we skipped five minutes into the video yes we spectated this team for five minutes and they did zero things um i will say his team did back out on him very unfortunate for your boy um but he does have twelve thousand dollars so he's now buying his loadout um, you know, dude, this is why, again, why I want to try to get everybody in our Discord community because playing with randoms could be toxic. And, uh, as you guys are witnessing here, we're spectating a solo guy. Now, oh, he got shot. Now, no matter what the situation is, unfortunately, he's by himself. That doesn't negate the fact that you need to throw your loadout drop somewhere safe. You're next to hospital with rooftops, right? With tents, with buildings. You're, this is a bad spot to be throwing down a loadout drop in the first place, but then you throw it away from cover. You should have threw it next to a building, next to a tent, something that you can kind of use the building or tent as cover or concealment. With this, you're just you're sitting in the open. You're going to get shot, and I'm really not surprised he got shot right here. I was legitimately about to freeze it before he got pelted in the face. Um, so it was just a bad call on his part. Also, guys, if you're getting shot at, like that situation right there, he's on the roof, so he would have been safe behind that metal container. He would have been safe right here if he just pushes up this building, he could sit here, be safe, and play it up. But unfortunately, he's now going to run in the open while plating um, with people still shooting at him and die. It's all situational based for sure. But again, look at angles. You got you to really start paying attention to angles. When you see tracers coming in, look to see where they're coming from. Be like, okay, if I hide here, am I safe? Or if I run in the open, am I going to die? That's how you make your decisions and you need to make those decisions on the fly. How does this happen? We're spectating a whole different teammate that didn't even kill that dude. Very confused. All right, here we are spectating Dutch Drummer, and he's got a full squad. It looks like there's an enemy at this compound. Again, when it comes to rotating when you're getting shot at, the enemy was clearly getting pelted. All he had to do is go prone behind the water tower or jump off the hill and reposition. Granted, jumping off the hill probably isn't the best idea because, well, if you jump off the hill, you're just kind of screwed. You lose the high ground, and you got a, nothing but wide open area to run to but laying prone behind the water tower was definitely the better play than running out the open and getting shot. Remember, time to kill in this game is extremely fast. So running from the tower to this building, even though it's not that many feet away, it's still possible to get shredded, which he did. All right, his teammates jumping off the water tower. Also guys, if you can avoid it, I know sometimes bounties and stuff are in towers, um, but if you can avoid going on water towers or uh, you know electric towers, whatever the thing is, if it's just one building with a ladder, um, and it's high up in the air. Try to avoid going up there because you're just a sitting duck. So this team ends up cleaning up that squad. And it looks like we're spectating a bunch of TTV kids and live kids. So hopefully this is pretty entertaining. But they do have their loadout already. And they're going towards the free loadout drop. Remember, I always say, guys, do not pass up an opportunity to get the guns you want. And on top of that, ghost. All right, here we are. They're going after a most wanted bounty. I love that. If you don't have bounties next to you and you want to know where an enemy is at, most wanted bounty is your second best thing. As someone in my comments on the other video said, it's the poor man's bounty, and I'm down with that. Regardless of it being the poor man's bounty, go for it. Utilize it. It's a tactic. Use it to your advantage. Plus, man, you know, don't allow them to get the teammates back. Don't allow it. Now, you do notice there's two targets that are popped up on the uh, on the mini-map right here. 
Um, you already know the King Bounty sitting down there perfectly still, right? And this was where concussions come to play. I tell you guys all the time, I recommend putting your heartbeat away and using concussions, and I still stand by that to this day. But this is going to be a perfect example. Once they take out the guy on this side of the bunker, they can then push in there, and it's a 4v1, hopefully. There may be an, another enemy down there with Ghost on, but hopefully it's a 4v1. Um, and then all you got to do is concuss them. They don't stand a chance. Concussions are legitimately a cheat code that people just don't utilize. And I'm thankful for it because I die a lot less because people don't run concussions, so I'm happy with it. Now, again, pr target priority, right? The bounty is actually at the very bottom of the bunker. The chance of him coming out to peek and fight you is very slim to shit. So I would take out the other target first. I would take out the guy in here first. Because again, this guy's not going to break out this door and peek you. But just in case he does come out to peek and play, make sure you have two teammates watching it. You're in a 2v4, a possible 2v4. So have two teammates sit up on top of this thing watching this doorway. So if the bounty does peek out, they can blitz him down. And then you and your boy go in there. Hopefully your teammate has concussions and you can get him. This is a very winnable fight. People like to think that if they're down here, they're safe, but there's it's very far from the opposite. Most players, especially my lobbies, run concussions. So if you're camping in a bunker, you're basically dead already. Good down. I don't understand what that dude was doing at all. At all. This is very confusing. All right, the guys went ahead and bled out. Didn't even care. Now look, again... 4v1, but I've seen teams throw this. I've seen it happen. Hopefully someone's got a concussion. Otherwise, this could get real dirty. For the enemy. <laughs> Dude had a barricade set up. I'm done, bro. <laughs> Just hiding behind it. All right, they're going ahead and grab a search objective. They got a bunch of money, and it doesn't look like there's any other teams over here, so why not, right? Why not? The search objectives are just going to hit this compound and the compound across the street. So you can just knock them out real quick and come up with some more money. So it's a great tactic to use. If you need the money, which you always need money, never sell yourself short by just trying to get kills and not focusing on some kind of objectives to get money. The reason why I always emphasize you guys try to get money so you guys can constantly have UAVs up. Unfortunately, this team has zero kill streaks and they're sitting on a lot of money and it doesn't look like a buy station's anywhere near them. All right, here we are. Skip ahead a little bit. I never noticed that dead cow either, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, all right, there's a sniper glare at aiming at them from the 159. Nice job pinging, guys. Again, always ping the enemy. Once your enemy, once your teammates know that the enemy's there, though, you can remove the ping. All right, again, how he's zigzagging, I definitely recommend just slide canceling across. Um, zigzags aren't really going to help you with a sniper, especially just doing this. You're moving my, your entire, entire body and actually doing like an S shape. That's a better option than just jiggling because your head really doesn't move. Your arms are moving. That's kind of it. Very ballsy of him to peek out this hard. He did get two armor breaks though, but very ballsy. If that would have been a good sniper, that would have been an easy headshot for the sniper. But good job changing angle. Good job splitting from the team and getting shots at the enemy at another angle. All right, there's a sniper right there. Oh my God, bro. Yo, imagine a whole team of snipers. Good knock right there. That's the pick they need. Remember, guys, when you have a pick, you need to push it. You need to capitalize on that pick. Don't sit and wait. The longer you wait, the longer that team has to plan their next move. If you're picking them off one at a time, they'll start panicking and making panicky decisions. You give them ample amount of opportunity to come up with another game plan, they have a potential to outplay you. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate, bro. Um, unfortunately, blue and purple, I don't know what the hell they were doing. There was nothing back there. There was no enemies there. I don't know what blue's doing. He's just looting a building right now. That's just bad teamwork, honestly. Dutch really didn't do anything wrong. I wouldn't have pushed in because we knew there were three targets minimum, right? So he was going to jump into a 1v2 regardless. I probably would have climbed up on the roof of it using the ladder. I would have got on the roof and got some shots on the enemy instead of trying to challenge them around a corner where, of course, two of them were waiting for him. But again, not his fault. I think his team should have just pushed with him. So here we are again in a position where this enemy team is just basically picking you guys off one at a time. Pick the right gun for the right fight. The MP7 at that range is it's okay, but it's not going to outshoot a Kilo, a Graw, a Bruin, um, whatever you want to name. The MP7 has better range than the MP5, but I definitely would rather use whatever other weapon he's got. Oh, fucking weird. He's got a PKM. He was shooting at the enemy at that range, and he's got a PKM with a VLK on it. As players, you really need to know which weapon to use for what fight. 
You can't just use your secondary in a long range fight. Granted, that's a mid range fight, but even at that range, MP7 is not better than the, than the PKM. All right, so we have the circle coming in right now. We have the circle coming in and they have you guys gate kept, right? Well, what's the option? In this situation, you're just kind of screwed. I mean, if you go straight, you're dead. If you go left, you're dead. If you go right, you're dead. You have to play it up. The gas is on. You have no gas mask. So you're just kind of forced to leave cover. Um, and just risk it for the biscuit. But of course you died. I'm not really surprised on that. Hopefully phase five doesn't see that. Um, and it is what it is, man. It is what it is. There's really some positions you put yourself in, guys. There's no way to work yourself out. There just really isn't. And that's, again, why positioning is so important in this game. Because if you're ever in a situation where you can't win, it's probably because you put yourself in that situation. So we, All right, so we have one guy left. We're back to Dutch Drummer. And he's going to try his best to land for the search objective. Now, I want you guys to notice how he pulled his shoot at the last second. That way, um, he couldn't get shot out of the air. I see too many times people just with their parachute just having fun enjoying life the next thing you know they get blitzed in the air by a scar by an mp7 by whatever the hell it is um it, you're just an easy target floating up in the air so turn off your auto parachute pull it at the last second without breaking your ankles don't be like me all right so his phase five teammate did win his gulag so we're back in a pretty winnable situation when it comes to quads quads is a bitch regardless right if you're in a 4v4 it's going to be a hard fight if the enemy seems spread out, um, and that's kind of the meta. But if it's if you're it's a two v four, you're still in the same situation. You just really need to focus on position. Now, one enemy is shooting in front of him, but we don't know where his teammates are at, so be very careful. So we know there's a guy right there, right? But he's fighting someone else. So the last thing you want to do is just push up to him and try to challenge him in a close range fight. Like basically, the last thing you want to do is push that building, because if you push that building and you round that corner, and you go to fight him, you could get shot by whoever the hell he's shooting at. So avoid always just being super aggressive. That's unfortunate. All right, here we are spectating pickles and this dude slide canceling everywhere he goes. <laughs> like you don't have to slide cancel this much, guys. You can't even walk through a doorway. Relax. You can slow. And he goes, okay, so when you're leaving a building, when you're talking about having 12 teams left, 29 players overall, we're technically in game, mid to late game, right? Especially farmland when you're on the edge of the circle. What I always, what I always tell you guys when you're on the edge of the circle, make sure if you leave a building, you look both ways, right? Look both ways before crossing the street. This dude's so worried about slide canceling and looking like a badass to his friends that he just didn't even look. He didn't even look and he got shot for it. You know, it is what it is, bro. You got to pay attention, man. No matter how good you are at the game, no matter how good of a shot you are, no matter how good your movement is, um, no matter how many kills you have, if you don't pay attention, if you don't look around, especially late game, you're going to fucking die. All right, here we are spectating Jim, and he's got a pistol, and he's camping uh, over here, right? I know he's got a bounty on him, and it's not a bad decision to sit here, but you don't have to make your entire team nauseous by... We're just going to skip because this dude is clearly, um, something's wrong with him. I don't know what's wrong with him. All right. Now that Dick Farm Dunn has his squad back, hopefully he'll have a little bit of balls to run around and do things. Granted, I'm not going to hate on him for sitting up here. He had a most wanted on him. I would have done the same thing. Uh, it is what it is. But now it's time to move. I don't know what Jim's doing right now. His team's obviously flying somewhere else. So you need to start moving, right? You want to get there as fast as possible. Now, I always tell you guys, don't hold your parachute and fly in. This is a different situation because you have nothing but the open anyway. Um, there's very little cover around here, so I'm not against him floating the entirety. You're on the edge of the map. There's probably not going to be anybody over there to shoot you anyway. It is what it is. Unfortunately, two of your teammates did go down. It looks like the other one is hurt as well, but they're sick in the res, so I guess they won their fight. All right, my man knew what to do, though. He went ahead and got his loadout drop. Uh, great play. Uh, instantly thinking about it. And hopefully this team can do something with it, man. I know Pickles has 11 kills. Uh, Jim has 7 kills. I'm not sure what Reckless and Mar Marin are sitting on. Um, but it seems like a pretty decent squad. I think they're cracked out on Adderall right now. Because Jim was doing circles around the bounty. And Pickles was slide canceling into doors and shit. So they're definitely... They've definitely had a lot of sneak energy. A lot of sneak energy drinks. If you guys haven't used sneak energy before, I highly recommend it. Use code SAVAGE at checkout. Link will be in the description below. 
But anyway, Jim is marking an area. I'm not sure exactly what he's marking. I want you guys to notice he's sitting in the... Well, he was. He just tried to get next to a tree. But I want you guys to notice he's sitting in the open. He's sitting in the open. Um, he's vulnerable. He's sitting next to a tree, which is cool, I guess. Um, if he wants to lean against it, if he gets tired. But I would sit, be sitting behind the tree. Mount on the tree. Just do something. That way, if you get shot, you don't have to back up and then sidestep. You can just sidestep, right? The least amount of movements you have to do when you're getting shot at, the greater chance you have at surviving a gunfight. So sitting in a situation like this where there's no cover in front of you, period, he's asking to die. Granted, this team's sitting at the gas station on a roof, not really doing much of shit. So they're probably really not that confident players anyway, which in turn would mean that they're probably not that good. Um, but nonetheless, don't push yourself out there, guys. Always try to utilize cover. If you're about to get in a gunfight, if you're in a gunfight, or even when you just finish a gunfight, and the reason why I say just finish is because guess what? This game loves third parties. I'm not really sure exactly why he hesitated on shooting. The Actually, I know exactly why because he has his gun built like an asshole. Um... The M13 has incredible range and it is one of the most accurate weapons in the game. You're like, Savage, why did he have so much recoil? Well, that's because he had the wrong fucking grip on it. Commando foregrip on a long range AR. That's it. No argument there. Don't care what you think. It's a fact. There's no reason M13 should have had a recoil in the first place. And there's no reason a player who uses the M13 should not be confident with that gun and hesitate to shoot, wait for his teammate to shoot him first. But after seeing his build, it makes sense now. This guy, he, he plays like he's cracked. He's got, he's got fast movement and he's very reactive. But when it comes to shooting, he's not as reactive as I would think, which is very weird, right? He needs to reload his gun, dude. He's going to give me an aneurysm, bro. Reload. Thank you, God. All right. Now, look, we don't know where the enemies are at. We know they're down there. We know there's enemies down there, but we don't know where they're at. The thing that scares me about this fight right here is the fact that there's multiple ways for the enemy to get up over here. Because you already stunned the enemy, because you already killed the enemy's teammate, um, they're probably moving to the north to reposition and hopefully come kill you, hopefully. The thing that I would do is you're not safe right here anyway, right? You're outside the circle. And even if you sidestep in inbounds, you have zero cover. Zero cover is scary. I'm not fighting with no cover. Hell no. Um, so I would work my way to this ridge right here to his right. I would work my way to the right that way I can get the high ground that way I can have some rocks and some cover to protect me if the enemy does end up flanking and killing me um, But just running at the enemy with no cover at all or plan is just there's his head right there and GG he's dead and Marion goes down too. he came up the other pathway Now you have their teammates coming back in from the gulag and For some reason green jumped down. Maybe green needed ammo. Maybe but guys, when the circle's about to move and there's only two ways up and it's going to be closed in by the blue, don't leave the high ground to go get loot. You can fight other teams and find other loot, trade loot with your teammates. You can do so many things, jumping off the high ground, leaving your teammate to fight by themselves. Very terrible move on Green's part. Mr. Slide Cancel McG McGee just uh, bailed out on his team and got him killed, honestly. Are they going to win this? Are they gonna oh, God. They're going to win this fight. Only Pistol Boys left. Only pistol boys left. There it is. Oh, no. Self-res. Oh, no. GG's. They actually won the fight. Good shit, Reckless. Also, guys, stop abusing pings, guys. They literally spam the fuck out of pings, which breaks your teammate's concentration. You're hurting your teammate more than you're helping. The enemy's pinged. That's fine. That's all he needs. You don't have to fucking keep spamming the noise. If the ping goes away, then ping it again, right? There's no reason to just sit there and spam the pings. I rage on my teammates when they do that to me. Rage on them. All right, so talking about positions, right? Um, this is not a bad idea. Two reasons. One, them coming to this side, they'll be able to get, keep anybody coming out of prison. Two, they'll be able to get their ghost class. And three, they'll be on the high ground. I really like this move. Granted. And here they are jumping off of prison. Easy kills, man. Again, I never recommend camp in prison no matter where the circle's at. Because when you jump off, guess what? You're sitting duck. I like. I do like that they're using live pings. They got a little spammy with it, but everyone they look at gets live pinged. This man would be so much better if he had a commando on it. Vertical recoil? I'm going to give you guys a tip. 
But Savage, so-and-so did a video that said that it controls better horizontal recoil. Uh, that's cool, but guess what? M13 has more vertical recoil than it does horizontal. Not only that, but horizontal recoil is easier to control than vertical. So when you're talking about a ranged fight and you have a gun that kicks vertically, right? Up and down. Guess what? I'd rather control the up and down at range than a little bit of side to side, especially the M13. This thing virtually has zero horizontal recoil. Bad build in my opinion. This gun would be way more accurate if he had a, if he had a commando on it. This gun should be a laser, and this dude's just kicking all over the place right now. Yeah, I don't understand why he's like wanting to lay prone. His, his crosshair is everywhere. This is the most accurate gun in the game. It's, it's tilting me, guys. I'm sorry. It's tilting me hard. Look, in this situation, you both should not be focused on this guy. Right now, y'all are fighting. Y'all are fighting for the kill. Green has the right idea. Green is looking at the totality. He's looking at the entire picture. Pickles, good on you, side cancel boy. Orange, don't know what he's doing, but he's obviously watching a different angle. Granted, I definitely would stay near my team. I don't. I have no idea what Orange is doing, but whatever. You and Blue sitting here killing a guy who's definitely going to die regardless of what happens. Not the play. Who's watching? Your East. Who's watching over here? Nobody. Right? So somebody could be... So either A, have somebody watch to your east, which probably nobody coming up because it's just an open field, but definitely send one of you two out here to watch with green. Green is looking at the rest of the map. That's where people are going to be coming in. People are going to be coming in from farmland. So somebody needs to be with green to watch them because if green ends up in a 1v2 situation and he's by himself, you know, he could possibly lose it. Right now, you guys are in a 2v1 situation. Let's have somebody break off. This guy right here is not going to survive, period. All right, Orange is in a fight right now. He just actually got the kill, and there's one guy left that's not down yet. And I think Orange is finishing him off right now. I don't agree with this either. This is something you see a lot of players do. They'll ADS, and they'll just walk towards the target. You know how fast these guns ADS, bro? Run towards the rock, and as soon as the enemy peeks it, then ADS. You don't need... This isn't a, this isn't a big scope. You don't need to hold for a lot of zoom. Just run towards the rock. Try to get a flank. Help your teammate out. And then if you see the enemy, then ADS and snap on them. Don't ever just walk in ADS. This is terrible. Also, he needs to turn his ADS sensitivity down. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about right here. Right? So when the enemy peaks right here, he's going to notice it instantly. His reaction time is good, but he overshoots the target by a lot. Target's right here. He overshot him twice the distance. So what does that mean? You should turn his ADS sensitivity from a 1 to a 0.5. Now it's a guess, but because his crosshair went double where it should have, cut your ADS sensitivity in half and try to see if that works, right? Now he's got to snap back. Now that's why his aim's everywhere too. Look at that. Look at his aim, bro. And I'm not hating on him. I'm not. This game has a lot of settings you have to tweak to make it a game for you. The only reason I know about ADS sensitivity is because of previous BRs. A lot of new players have no idea what ADS sensitivity is. They don't even realize it's a thing. They change their sensitivity, they get control freaks, and they think they're good to go. But no, you've got to tweak your ADS sensitivity. If there's anything you take from this channel, please, with your ADS sensitivity, make it good for you. But... They got the win. GG's on their part, boys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, again, subscribe to the channel right now. Leave a like on the video. Let's get this video to 700 likes. And also, guys, please, 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 please tweak your ADS sensitivity, guys. Don't just copy a streamer's sensitivity. Don't just copy your YouTuber's sensitivity. You guys can use it as a template. Change it there and see if it works for you. But if it's not working, tweak it a little bit. If it's too much, raise it back to a six. Just find the perfect medium for you guys when it comes to sensitivity or ADS sensitivity with high zoom and low zoom. You need to set the game up for you. But look, I know I was trolling him at the end, but again, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm not out here making a channel of bullying people. I just want to emphasize the mistakes they're making. That way, you guys can kind of learn from it. It'll stick in your head. You'll remember, oh shit, Savage yelled at this kid because it was like that. Maybe I should change it too. But enough about that, guys. Y'all have a good one and good luck in Warzone. What is going on, guys? I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and you want to check out some previous favorites of mine, make sure you click these two videos over here. And as always, subscribe by clicking the button below. You guys have a good one and keep on improving.